Hello and welcome to Moment of Truth on Labour Social. I'm Graham Hughes. Four years ago today, the UK did the stupidest thing in its 400-year history. We left the European Union. For many of us who voted to remain in the EU, Brexit is the turd that just won't flush, no matter how many times politicians like to pretend that it's business as usual. The fact remains that we have imposed economic sanctions on ourselves worthy of a loser of a major war. The EU was created to foster closer integration across our continent, not just so that we could break the seemingly endless cycle of war that this continent has suffered for over two and a half thousand years, but that so that you and I could live and work and set up a business, and marry and build a house and or retire in more than 30 other beautiful, peaceful, prosperous nations, no questions asked. Not only that, but we could, could buy and sell stuff as easily across our own continent as we do our own nation. Peace, freedom, trade. Brexit smashed all that with a wrecking ball. Had Brexit not happened, there's no way Putin would have felt, felt empowered enough to launch a full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Had Brexit not happened, our children would not have had their horizons curtailed, trapping them on this damp, cold rock in the North Atlantic, dramatically reducing their opportunities in this otherwise increasingly integrated world. Had Brexit not happened, our economy would be doing all right, if not massively better. There wouldn't need to be a cost of living crisis. There would be money for the NHS and three million people would not have to be using food banks. Had Brexit not happened, the cost of our weekly shop wouldn't have, become, wouldn't have become a lot more expensive with a lot less choice. Our fruit and veg wouldn't be going off within a couple of days of purchase. And, as of midnight last night, it's about to get even worse. I just want you to take a second to reflect on the fact that if you're rich, none of this affects you. You can still go and live and work anywhere in Europe. You can afford the €28,800 you need in your bank account each year to get residential in Spain. You can afford a lawyer to do the paperwork, an accountant to ensure the figures tally. You can afford the £38,700 a year you'll need if you want to marry someone from France and you want to live in the, together in the UK. You can afford the hikes in the price of food and drink, postage, shipping, etc. You can still afford to travel around our continent. The exchange rate that's never recovered from the Brexit vote matters less. You can afford the extra pet insurance and the vet fees for taking Fido to Baritz. You can afford the additional roaming charges. Your children can still study abroad. You can afford to pay for Tarquin's finishing school in Switzerland. You can afford to give your daughter the wedding she's always dreamed of and the funeral your dad would have wanted. You see, Brexit doesn't affect the rich. It only affects us, the little people. Here's a quick list of just some of the lying sacks of shit who told us that Brexit would actually make our lives better. Nigel Farage, Boris Johnson, Jacob Rees-Mogg, Michael Gove, Richard Tice, Andy Wigmore, Aaron Banks, Charlie Elphick, Daniel Hannan, Daniel Kaczynski, Douglas Carswell, Lance Foreman, Larry Elliott, Matthew Elliott, no relation, Matthew Marcus Fish, Patrick Minford, Owen Patterson, Steve Barkley, Richard Drax, David Campbell Bannerman, Dominic Cummings, Nigel Lawson, Bill Cash, Crispin Blunt, Desmond Swain, Digby Pudding Jones, James Cleverly, Kelvin McKenzie, Harry Cole, Rocco Forte, Tim Martin, Simon Wolfston, James Dyson, Nick Ferrari, Paul Dacre and Rishi Sunak. What do these scumbags have in common? Aside from the fact they're all men. Yeah, you guessed it. They all attended posh private schools. Did you? No? <laughs> well, then you're shit out of luck, aren't you? In this, our disgraceful oligarchy, a term that's come to mean ruled by a handful of rich assholes. And now, thanks to their efforts, you can literally never escape to live your life in a place where the size of your daddy's bank balance at your moment of conception doesn't dominate your life cho choices for the following 80 years. This is something that I and others like me hope to change sooner rather than later. 
Unlike the people who told you to vote for Brexit, I take the freedoms of my fellow British citizens seriously. And this system of vast and indefensible inequality, which is pumping untold quantities of untreated sewage into our once green and pleasant land while blocking the exits, needs to end. And that starts with us acknowledging what they've done to us and vowing that they're not going to get away with this. That's my take. Let me know yours in the comments below.